This is the Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. Good morning, I'm Justin Mormuth. The 2023 hurricane season is upon us, and after a brutal one-two punch last year, Central Florida could sure use a break. From catastrophic flooding to severe beach erosion, many of us are still dealing with the impacts caused by Ian and Nicole. This morning, Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells is here to reflect on last year and the lessons learned and what to expect over the next six months. Hurricane season now officially underway, and I'm, let's just start with this. What number is this for you? Central Florida hurricane season. Oh, Central season. Florida hurricane yeah. seasons? I uh, 23. I okay. came here in uh, October of 2000, right at the end of the hurricane season. So then here we are, 2023. So at least 23 full seasons mm -hmm. behind me and hopefully many more to go. You never yeah. know. But hopefully there's at least you know, a few more to go. And overall, I really got into hurricane forecasting in 1987 when I moved to the Myrtle Beach market, mm -hmm. Florence, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So I hate to date myself, but more hurricane seasons yeah. than you've been alive. Probably. It's crazy. <laughs> how, yeah, that's true. Um, that is a fact. Uh, it's crazy, though, how, how technology has advanced. And I'm curious how things have changed. And obviously, so much has changed. Probably oh, the yes. complete, oh, just. A, a complete 180 on, on right. being able to forecast these things. But from, from that time, and even as of late, we're really mm -hmm. seeing technology really transform and I don't know if it makes your job easier or what it does but how would you put where we are today in forecasting hurricanes oh exponential like when I mean, you say let's just go ahead and round the number up it's like 30 let's say I've done 30 seasons overall yeah. the few I did in South Carolina the 23 here okay what we used to do to forecast where the storm was going and where we thought it might make landfall and how to digitally show that on TV put a graphic up has changed totally it's even changed you're not even conscious of it in the last decade mm -hmm. since you've been doing television it's changed even more there was a time when I first saw what we call the spaghetti models the actual graphical display of what the euro said and what the GFS said and what I went oh my gosh why did we never do that before mm -hmm. how did that happen so all of a sudden we had the ability on computers to lay out all the tracks that the hurricane center was looking at so I'd push a button and show them and go, this is what the Hurricane Center is up against. They're looking at all these different models trying to figure out where to place the cone and the direct line they believe it's going to go on. That's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Here's what I'm doing for you or trying to explain. And so if you go back to like 1987, 1988, 1989 with Hurricane Hugo, I barely had a cone. And when we had the cone, it was a big old wide thing. Mm -hmm. And I look back at my tapes from that night um, and we had it going somewhere between maybe Georgia or Cape Hatteras and all of a sudden by the next day it's coming into like South Carolina somewhere but even as recent as six hours out they thought it might go directly south of Charleston or into Myrtle they couldn't mm. decide it ended up going Charleston now that's a big swing yeah but and like with Ian it didn't swing that much in the last six hours mm -hmm. it swings that much in the last 24 but not in the last three to six anymore so it's all yeah. changed graphical Mm -hmm. Change modeling has changed. It's a different ball game altogether. The caveat, though, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. is because it is so precise. I don't know if that lets people's guards down just in the back of their brain. They're, you know, if they're along the coast and they're mm -hmm. looking at the cones and the forecast models, and say they're 50 miles away, they say, right. "Oh, we're good." Oh, but no. But no. And I think I don't know if that's a great way to put it or a correct way to put it, but that because things have really evolved and you guys are able to really get to this incredible forecast point on where it's going and the, the slight changes, whether that lets someone's, you know, guard down, perhaps. Creates more problems than A it little helps. bit, yeah. I think what you're on to there is really the messaging mm -hmm. and the way we do it. And so I don't want to say we failed during Hurricane Ian. We did the best we could do. We were on television talking constantly. We were warning people. I kept saying catastrophic flooding, yep. catastrophic rain. Mm -hmm. And I don't think those words meant anything to anyone. And so we watched the cone come up and come into the Gulf Coast of Florida and roll right over top of us. And you've heard story upon top of story upon top of story of people saying, I really didn't think it was going to be this bad. Mm -hmm. I really didn't think we were going to get hit. I didn't evacuate because we've stayed here so many times before, or on the other hand, we've left so many times before. And I think that what you're getting into there is the messaging is failing because people see the direct line in the middle and think, well, if the eye doesn't come over me, I'm going to be good. Right. But a hurricane's not a point. Mm -hmm. as evidenced by the size of storm surge, the impact of widespread inland flooding, and then the, the actual 
footprint of the wind. Mm -hmm. I had friends who, who held on in a rental house up in uh, Inglewood, up in Sarasota County, mm -hmm. well north of Fort Myers. They thought they were going to die. Mm -hmm. They had wind speeds in there somewhere in excess of 110, 115, 120 miles per hour. And they really thought the roof was coming off. The whole place was shaking, thought they were going to die. Now, should they have evacuated? Yeah, they shouldn't have stayed on the mm -hmm. coast. They should have come inland a little bit. And then you have people who, um, who are across the interior were saying, we never expected that we would flood. How did this water get to us? I think now they have an idea of what catastrophic flooding means. Right. The imprint of what we got last year, I hope it stays with people. Mm -hmm. But just because the cone doesn't take you in, mm -hmm. doesn't mean you're not getting impacts. And just because the black line goes north of you, doesn't guarantee your roof is not gonna be damaged or maybe come off. And that's a message that we fail to deliver. Ian, but also Nicole, because Nicole made landfall in Hutchinson Island. Way south. Way south, mm -hmm. and you saw the effects that that had on Daytona Beach Shores and Wilbur, I don't, by, the sea. Wilbur by the Sea. Just rocked it. It was, and it still is, an unbelievable sight. I know you had a chance to tour that. Unfortunately, it's impossible to make the necessary repairs in the short amount of time between when that happened to the start of hurricane season. Right, you have a late October, November storm. Right. You're not ready by June. No, Obviously absolutely not. not. And and I'm, I don't. You know, we don't want to be negative, but things could obviously get worse, and it doesn't need to take a landfall. Our larger point here is that just because the storm is not coming on top of your house and the eye of the storm is not coming on top of your house doesn't mean that significant damage and is going to happen. Right. Effects. Big time effects for right. you. You can have that beach erosion. Mm -hmm. uh, a simple nor'easter, a simple low off the coast that is non-tropical right. can eat your beach line all the way down, take away the millions of dollars of sand and mm -hmm. all the improvements we had, and they're sitting out there with swimming pools on sticks praying, hoping, wondering, are they gonna fall? Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been blessed since hurricane season with only one or two big close calls, but how much longer can we take this? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, what's the biggest takeaway from last season before we move on to this season? I think the catastrophic flooding impact that we had in Osceola County, that we had over in Volusia County, that we had in Eastern Orange County. Mm -hmm. Now I live in Western Orange County. I did not have catastrophic flooding, but you know who did, you know who had flooding? Um, Universal had flooding, yeah. they don't talk about it much. Disney had flooding, they don't talk about it much. But I have friends who work there, and they're like, oh yeah, that's why we had to close, we had flooding was going on, and that's why we weren't able to open mm -hmm. for days. What's well, all because of what we didn't expect or what we couldn't convey to them was going to happen. There was no way to stop it, Yeah. no way to stop it. Right. But I think the words now, when I say, hey, guys, we have catastrophic flooding coming, mm -hmm. I think it will wake people up. Mm -hmm. I did a live shot the day after landfall. I got in um, Chopper 6 and flew down. Mm -hmm. Got down to Kissimmee where um, the Samaritan yep, good home Samaritan, was. Yeah. Good, Samaritan, good Sam was. Mm -hmm. And the people were still there being carted out on boats, kayaks. And I stood there and Matt Austin and Lisa said, well, how do you think this is going to help you with your forecasting in the future? And I said, well, I, this is not going to change my forecasting. Mm -hmm. I think this is going to help change my messaging. Mm. So when I say to people, remember what happened with Ian mm -hmm. and the catastrophic flooding. I don't have to go all the way back to Faye right. in 08. This happened last year. Mm -hmm. If we have another catastrophic season or another catastrophic storm effect, I think people will listen better, mm -hmm. will understand more, and not have to wonder, what does he mean? And coming up, Tom will break down the 2023 forecast and the significance an El Nino weather pattern could have on our season. Stay with us. This is the Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. Welcome back. After an active three seasons with a La Nina weather pattern, El Nino, which often leads to fewer hurricanes in the Atlantic Basin, is expected sometime this summer. Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells is back with us now to explain why even with the change, History shows El Nino can still produce devastating storms. It's going to mean a dial down in numbers. Mm -hmm. Instead of having like 25 storms running through the entire alphabet of storms, right. chances are we're going to stay within our range. NOAA says just below. Colorado State says just below in their forecast for the season. Okay, I'm on board with that. But when you say it only takes one, and you say, well, that's a cliche. That's a cliche because it's true. Right. It's true. It's the truth. Um, when I ask people what was the worst hurricane season we've ever had, most people here in Central Florida go, oh, 
2004, I'm like, you know what, really? Most active hurricane season ever was like 2005, another one after that. The reason 2005 doesn't click with people in Central Florida is because 2004 was our worst season. Mm -hmm. We got hit. You hate to be the Toby Keith of weather people, but what about me? Yeah. What about me? <laughs> Don't talk about me. Everyone wants to talk about me. And Don't I, talk about yeah. me. Talk about us. Talk about what happened here. Mm -hmm. So that impact of that one storm for you makes or breaks that hurricane season. Yeah. And anytime we get the El Nino going in the Pacific, the wind shear coming across the Gulf and across North America slows down development because it rips off the tops of the storms, mm -hmm. keeps them from developing. That's all well and good, but it doesn't stop every storm. And the classic story is, Hurricane Andrew did not come until August. That was an El Nino season. Mm. Pretty strong El Nino season. And no one wants a Hurricane Andrew. Right. And okay. it's, the stat I saw on that was interesting. I think it, folks would find this interesting. 1992 was one of the least active hurricane seasons on, on record. record. Only seven named storms. There However, one of those names was Andrew. Crushed it. There you go. And that's it. And that's the takeaway that... You can see these numbers in the in the predictions, and right. that's all well and good. Mm -hmm. It takes one. It takes one. It takes one. Um, all right. So, I know that El Nino. You know, we're talking about the wind shear, the effects that that has on. You know, that's a good thing when we're trying to right. not shear have, the top side. Yeah. Shove them. Yeah. Um, the warmer ocean temperatures, though. Overall. Overall. Are scary. It's scary, and it, do you think that that could perhaps? take away from the benefits of an El Nino. Yeah, I did a great interview with him. Well, I said great. I did, he's great. <laughs> I didn't do You're great. only as good as your, who's who you're interviewing. As your client, yeah. as your, as your prospect. Yeah. Um, with Phil Klassbach. And I asked him that same question, like, mm -hmm. hey, Phil, so it's still, man, El Nino is going to rage. It's going to shut down most of them. He goes, but yeah, it's the warm temperature sound that keep it in balance. I'm like, right, why don't you explain it, Phil, better than I, since he's a doctor. I'm just, you know. That's right. He's like, uh, well, here's the deal. With that much water, still going to pop a bunch of storms. We'll wait and see who wins that battle. I really think a strong El Nino will still shut most of it down. Mm -hmm. But again, back to the dangerous part that it doesn't shut them all down. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't shut down the major ones either. We right. could still end up with a major storm, a typical worst case scenario. We've still not had that. Like you mentioned, Andrew was a very strong storm in a, in a slow year. There's no reason Andrew couldn't have developed a little farther north and come straight in yeah. to the Cape. Right. It came straight into Homestead, hit our dear friend Candace Campos and mm -hmm. gave her the love of meteorology that she has now. What if it happened again? Hurricane Hugo went in in Charleston. Hurricane Andrew went in at Homestead. In between is still a shooting range. Mm -hmm. We could still get nailed. We've never had worst case scenario with a rapidly intensifying storm like an Andrew or Hugo mm -hmm. making landfall in our market from the east. One of those close calls recently is Hurricane Matthew. Scared the daylight. It me. was ripping out yes. there. And it was very, very close to missed, becoming that. Missed by 10 miles. That 10 miles made a Crazy. world of a difference. World of difference. That world would have been. Maybe. It's the most scared I've been without. Um, most scared I've been was when the eye wall of Irma detached from the center and came roaring over Disney and over southwest Orange County. It was County. whipping it, 100 miles it, an hour. Correct. It, yeah, it was crazy. The eye itself went toward the Gulf, but the eye wall detached and came north. And so in that line of thunderstorms coming off of Irma, uh, my roof was damaged. Mm -hmm. My kids were home alone. My wife's calling me. I was kind of, that per, That was the most personal for right. me. I get it, maybe not for you, mm -hmm. but for Tom. But the most scared I've been without bigger effects was Matthew. That was so close. Mm -hmm. And I was worried, worried, worried that we were about to have it. And by the grace of God, yeah. we missed it by 10 miles. Skirt. Mm. Crazy. All right, let's talk about preparedness. Yes, um, please. It's something that uh, we all need to do. Uh, ahead of time is always the best. And especially right now, I mean, you get a sales tax holiday that runs through June 9th. So hurricane supplies are tax free. What, what are the key essentials here? And I, I don't want to put you on the spot mm -hmm. on listing every single item, but what comes to mind on what folks need to have? And I, it might depend on where they live. It does depend on where you live, I think. You want sandbags if you're anywhere near water. Mm -hmm. And please understand, I'm gonna address water in a moment. Um, water's my favorite subject, because normally people are like, oh my gosh, the wind speeds are crazy. But almost always, and this was driven home last season, it's the water, not the wind, that takes you away. You get water moving at a slow rate, even if it's only moving three to five miles per hour. If you get a foot or two of water moving your way at three to five miles per hour, it has the impact 
of like an F5 tornado. It'll rip your house right off the foundation and carry it away. Take your car away, take you away. Mm -hmm. So flowing water is the scary thing. But when it comes to surviving pre preparedness, I think sandbags to keep the horizontal flow of water in your lawn mm -hmm. out. Like I live on top of a hill. Yeah. I'm not gonna fly. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Or am I? Because if the water piles up in my lawn and I get a northerly wind at about, mm, say 30, 40 miles per hour, and the water starts coming out of my lawn up toward my house in a horizontal flow, I could get some flooding damage. Mm -hmm. Sandbags would stop that. So I think sandbags for water prevention and then water for your house, for you. Mm -hmm. We always say you need one gallon per person per day. You do, just in case. You also need to prepare to be alone for about three to five days. We've not had anything that heavy happened here. I think there were people though with Ian who did not get help for three days yeah. or five it, it days. It was probably a week before some folks got their power back. I know we got reports from folks wondering, how come my power is not back on? Can you reach out to Duke? Can you reach out and to- And over there they know? are. I can see the lights. Why is right. mine not on right Right, now? and, okay. and I, that has to do with jurisdiction, things like that, who, right. who or, your provider is and, and, and in my neighborhood, draw. Yeah. In my neighborhood, I saw it. Yeah. Part of our neighborhood was that, why, how is the back side of our subdivision down on the front side's not? Mm -hmm. Had to do with one little transformer. Crazy. So I would say yeah. get your water ready, get your sandbags ready, and your non-perishable foods, mm -hmm. and you should be okay. Normally in a hurricane, what takes people out, what kills people 92% of the time, is drowning. Mm -hmm. So if you can get off the coast and get to dry ground and keep the water away, chances are you're gonna survive. Don't mm -hmm. do something silly that gets you injured. Don't go outside in the height of the storm. Do not start cleaning up if you don't know what you're doing. Try your best to stay away from down power lines. We That's when that people get mm -hmm. shocked and it, it takes them away. Also, you, you gotta factor in, you know, a lot of people, they have generators and having the proper generator safety, and I know we harp on this every single time when we start to lose power, but it it, it just, it matters to, to it's a fresh reminder on the dangers that that can present. I go back to the people from Ohio. You know, I lived in Ohio for years, went yeah. to Ohio State and studied meteorology. And so I pick on Ohio a lot because more people move to Central Florida from Ohio than any other state. And you come down here, you've never gone through this hurricane season before. It's unlike winter storms. They last sometimes 36 hours, just howling, blowing, and then you want your power back. Maybe you don't know how to use a generator. Mm. So make sure you don't put it inside your garage it has to be outside, so it gets mm -hmm. away from you. The exhaust goes away from your house, not in your house, because you could die. I want to end with this. Oh, yeah. Your message to someone, and, and I don't want to you know, forget about the folks who have lived through a hurricane. Right. I mean, we've, we've had them, I mean, as recent as seven months ago, believe it or not. Um, but, but to someone who, we have so many people moving here, what's your messaging to them? What would you like to tell them ahead of hurricane season mm -hmm and the potential of a storm heading our way, what, what should their mindset be? Talk to them. If I could wave a magic wand, I always say, if I could wave a magic mm -hmm. wand and get one message out to you, I would say it can happen to you, prepare for the worst, and you ought to be able to make it. It's not like an earthquake that hits out of the blue. Mm -hmm. It's not like a tornado that strikes and you don't get enough warning. You will know a couple of days or three or maybe even five days out that you're at risk. Get your water ready, get your medicines ready, have your plan set. And last week, Tom and the entire Pinpoint Weather team took some time to make sure you and your family are prepared for any storm that may head our way this year. If you missed the hour-long hurricane special, just head to ClickOrlando.com or the new 6 Plus Smart TV app. I'm Justin Mormuth. Hope you have a great Sunday.